Okay, in this video I'll be talking through the poem Disabled by Wilfred Owen. Um, this could be in preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English Language Exam Paper 2. It could be, alternatively, what you are covering for your coursework if your school has chosen that option. Um, or it could be that you're covering this poem for a different exam board. Um, before I start, there is so much to this poem, it was impossible and would be impossible for me to include everything. So, as people have done previously with other um, videos I've uploaded, please do write your comments below to share your interpretations as well, because there are so many different ways um, to read many of the lines. Um, but I've tried to at least give you a variation of language, form and structure. Okay, so first of all, let's look at the title. Um, now, obviously, you should have read the poem and know that it's about a war veteran. So the title contrasts to our typical image of a soldier, uh, someone that we would expect to be in excellent physical health. And so this just indicates the harrowing effects of war um, and you might even go further to say kind of the simplicity of this title highlights um, the new identity of this veteran, that he feels like he has just been reduced to someone who is disabled. That's the way he sees himself and that's the way people view him as later we notice, for instance, people see him like a queer disease. He sat in a wheeled chair, waiting for dark, and shivered in his ghastly suit of grey, legless, sewn short at elbow. Through the park, voices of boys rang saddening like a hymn, voices of play and pleasures after day, till gathering sleep had mothered them from him. Um, so straight away you'll notice that the soldier is not named. Um, I would argue that keeping the soldier anonymous reiterates that this could happen to lots of different soldiers. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, Wilfred Owen um, was against the war. And he, ch he used this poem to really highlight um, what a waste of time war is um, and how it affects, he really wants to highlight as well, how it affects soldiers um, and how they were kind of misled by propaganda. So he, he, want, he doesn't want you to think this is a one-off. This happened to many, many soldiers across the country. Um, or I should say across the Commonwealth. Um, notice also the diction wheeled. It's not a wheelchair. Remember, he, um, he's sewn, he is legless and sewn short at elbow. Um, so if he's sewn short at elbow, he doesn't have... Uh, the ability to even wheel himself. Um, so even that shows the kind of great dependency he has now on others and that kind of sense of hopelessness and desperation he may be experiencing as someone who once was a hero on the football pitch and someone who was physically healthy enough to go to war. Um, when he is waiting for dark, you might argue that this is a euphemism for death. Is he just waiting for the day to be over, which indicates that he's clearly extremely depressed? Um, or is he waiting actually for his life to end? But either way, he is definitely waiting for a state of oblivion um, to kind of shut everything out, which you might argue you are able to do during nighttime when you sleep. Um, <clears throat> there's also some kind of um, ghostly image, imagery as well. The fact that he shivers and he's in this ghastly suit of grey. So first of all, the fact that he does shiver suggests a weakness as well. Um, but then looking at that alliteration or the, the use of plosives, ghastly suit of grey, brings our attention um, to this really grim image of someone who really lacks that kind of vitality that he had previously. Um, so it's really quite a tragic image of a young man. He remember he joined the um, the war effort under age. Uh, so to see such a young man seem so ghostly is really quite tragic and tells you just kind of how war has sucked the life out of him or robbed him of his life. Wilfred Owen might argue. Um, on the third line, we have a Cesora here which um, I would argue emphasises his disability. He 
he feels like he is so short um and that just kind of emphasizes that or draws your attention to um the physical consequences of him going to war it's interesting that he can hear these voices of boys um playing pleasures of the day um, which you typically would associate with something positive. It should be a nice sound that you can hear in the background. But for him, it is saddening like a hymn. So this serves to emphasise his loneliness. Um, it's, it doesn't bring joy to him. It, if anything, it creates a melancholic tone. Um, so he's, again, we've been reminding, reminded here that He's incredibly depressed. He cannot find joy in anything. And when he does see or hear others that are enjoying life, it only reminds him of the life that he no, no longer has. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting that he feels like sleep mothers him from them. Um, so sleep is a form of protection. He doesn't have to hear the joys of others in sleep. He doesn't have to be reminded of what he's missing out on. And mothered is quite an interesting word because he relies on sleep to have that form of companionship, that form of comfort that a mother brings you, um, which reiterates his loneliness. I suggest maybe he doesn't have even any family members like a mother uh, who can provide that type of comfort anymore. Um, so it's an interesting and real sad um, metaphor to use to just highlight what a terrible, depressing position he is in after returning from the war. Tab, if I could change it. There we go. Um, about this time, town used to swing so gay when glow lamps budded in the light blue trees and girls glanced lovelier as the air grew dim in the old times before he threw away his knees. Now he will never feel again how slim girls' waists are or how warm their subtle hands, all of them touch him like some queer disease. So notice again the universality of not naming a town. This could be any soldier from any town. Uh, so same idea as before. Um, the Describing how town used to swing so gay, you might say that the diction here connotes like a playfulness and reminds us of the youth that he used to have. Um, there's also kind of romantic, I haven't put it I don't think in the, um, no I haven't in the annotations, but the next line is also quite a romantic image as well of these glow lamps budding the light blue trees, everything f seems so serene. Um, but you might argue also glow lamps, or the glow at least, connotes hope. And budded is a metaphor for his young life as well, um, before the war, full of potential, everything ahead of him. And it just again reiterates what a waste that he went to war and he's had his life or his vitality taken away from him. The alliteration um, for girls' glance just introduces this kind of playfulness and this flirtatious that he clearly enjoyed. He's a good-looking guy, as we're about to read later, and he enjoys having that attention from girls. Um, but we notice a transition here. So he talks about, you know, how wonderful it was then, in the old times before he threw away his knees. So you start to notice, I would argue this dash here indicates a transition. Here he's kind of getting lost in his memory, so this is a flashback, and he's thinking how wonderful town was and how flirty the girls were. And that dash is a transition in his tone, and he starts to become more bitter, more regretful. In the old times, interestingly, it's a phrase that, you might hear your grandparents say or your parents in the good old days. Um, so it's an interesting phrase for a young man to use. He could very well be 18, 19, 20 to refer to just a few years back, the old times. So it depicts the young veteran as an old man and again um, emphasises how 
war has really sucked the life out of him. But it also indicates that life really is very, very different after the war. Maybe there was this naivety before it. Um, and notice the phrasal verb here, threw away. There's a bitter tone and it's definitely echoing Wilfred Owen's belief that going to war, giving up your limbs, giving up your life more so, is not worth the sacrifice. It's a waste. Um, so that's kind of where that bitter and regretful tone comes from. Um, look at the definitive adverb as well, never. So we've got this great sense of hopelessness. He's never going to have the life he once had. Um, so again, that kind of feeds into his depression. And then all in yellow here is really just this romantic image contrasted with the harsh rejection he now has. So he enjoyed being intimate with girls. He enjoyed that closeness of being able to feel their waists. And hold the, the and feel the warmth of their their hands, um, and think about how the warmth of their hands contrasts with how cold he is now, sitting shivering in a dark room, waiting to go to bed. Um, but now instead, they touch him like some queer disease. So, especially zooming into the word queer, um, suggests he is seen as something strange, something different. So he has this sense of otherness. So we've got this sense of alienation, really. And it's it's really ironic that he went to war for his country, for his people. And now he comes back and he's rejected by them. Now he's alienated and um, he, he doesn't feel like he's accepted into um, society. There was an artist, silly for his face, for it was younger than his youth last year. Now he is old, his back will never brace. He's lost his colour very far from here, poured it down shell holes till the veins ran dry, and half his lifetime lapsed in the hot race, and leap of purple spurted from his thigh. Um, <clears throat> so it's interesting that he um, is referring to an artist, it sounds like an artist wanted to paint him, he's clearly very good looking, um, but he refers to the artist as silly for his face. Does he look back now, having experienced war, and realise how shallow, how naive, how ignorant they all were beforehand? How they um, were more concerned about, you know, the good looks of some guy that they want to paint. So it's quite interesting. I would argue that that might even be quite a bitter tone now looking back. Um, and so it's interesting he says here, this is a good indication of how old he is, for it was younger than his youth last year. So that just is a good indication of he, war has aged him within the span of a year. So again, this is just coming back to this idea of the harrowing effects of war. But now he is old, so again, that just supports this idea um, that he is like an old man. He's completely lost his youth. Um, and that hope and joy that comes with it. Um, again, we have the, the adverb never, so this definitive, um, this sense of hopelessness. His body will never be the same again. Um, he's lost his colour, that being a metaphor for youth and vigour. Um, later on, it, he talks about purple, this being blood, spurting out of his thigh, but you know, the colour purple also signifies energy and vigour. Um, so he's not, it's not just blood he's, he's losing, he's, he's losing that, um, that vitality that he once had. Um, notice the verb choice, poured it down. He doesn't lose it, he doesn't sacrifice it, he pours it down. Again, kind of linked with this idea of throwing away his knees. We've got this sense that going to war was a wasteful act. This wasn't a worthy sacrifice. It was a great waste. So again, we've got this regretful, bitter tone. Um, this is all kind of linked to this hot race, the excitement, the action of war. And that's important when we come to the next stanza, where everything kind of comes to a, 
um, so, so later on when we come to a shorter stanza, I should say, when everything kind of comes to a bit of an anticlimax. Um, and he refers to losing his life metaphorically as well again all linked to this idea that he's aged he's like an old man one time he liked a blood smear down his leg after the matches carried shoulder high it was after football when he'd drunk a peg he thought he'd better join he wonders why someone had said he'd look a god in kilts that's why and maybe too to please his meg aye that was it to please the giddy jilts he asked to join he didn't have to beg so look at the irony there. He's just talked about the blood spurting from his body um, in the previous stanza. And the irony of beforehand when he was naive and innocent, he used to like getting injured. He liked that kind of look back. It may, probably made him look masculine and heroic. Um, so look at the contrast and it really just indicates just how naive he was before the war. Um, he was again I ironically carried shoulder high um, after matches. He was the man of the match. He enjoys that glory that he received before the war. Ironically, he doesn't receive that afterwards when he's actually sacrificed a lot more and done something um, much more impressive than playing football. Um, the fact that he's drunk, basically, when he decides to join um, indicates that his decision was made on impulse. You could link this as well to the propaganda at the time and say that that's kind of, you know, young boys got carried away looking at um, how war was depicted in, in these propaganda posters as something almost like an adventure. Um, the, short, the short sentence also that follows, he thought he'd better join reflects that impulsiveness as well in his decision and highlights that this hasn't been thought thought through. Linked with his age as well, I mean, he's, he's young, he should be behaving in an impulsive manner. It's just a shame that this brought him to war. Um, the dash here, I would argue, indicates a reflection, a pause while he thinks, why on earth did I choose to go to war? I wonder if he comes back to that moment every time because it's ultimately this decision that has made a huge difference to his life. Someone had said he'd look like a god in kilts. So this simile indicates the motivation of this soldier. It wasn't to protect his country. It was really because he wanted the glory. He wanted the chance to be idolised. Just how he enjoyed being idolised, being carried shoulder high and having that blood smeared down his leg. He thought this was just another way so that you might argue that actually it was a vain reason. He went for vanity more than he did um, for any patriotic reason. Um, notice as well that the clauses are, are very short in this line. That's why and maybe too to please his Meg. You might argue that this indicates heightened emotion and it's um, it's painful for him to think about a girl that he clearly really liked, really wanted to impress, maybe his girlfriend. Um, but notice in the next line, he refers to her as a jilt, that being um, someone, a girl that rejects a man. So we now really learn that he's been rejected by, um, by his girlfriend or whoever he was trying to pursue. So again, we've got that kind of bitter tone um, as well. Smiling, they wrote his lie, aged 19 years, Germans he scarcely thought of, all their guilt, and Austria's did not move him, and no fears of fear came yet. He thought of jewelled hilts for dagger in, daggers in plaid socks, of smart salutes and care of arms, and leave and pay arrears, esprit de corps, and hints for young recruits, and soon he was drafted out with drums and cheers. So there's something quite heartless about it. It's a horrible image that he signs it. We like we learn through the fact that he says it's a lie, that he was young, he was too young to join the war effort. And that often happened, um, where uh, boys un under age would sign up and just lie. Um, but it's interesting that 
those that signed him up smiled as they wrote his lie. And maybe they knew, maybe they could tell and they were just happy to get another recruit. Um, maybe it was just, again, a naivety. But there's something that just doesn't sit well there, thinking that he's basically signing his, well, they are signing his life away. Um, so he's, he pretends he's 19 years. Um, the fact that he doesn't think about the Germans or the Austrians, or, or the Austrians, sorry, highlights his naivety again. This just confirms that the reasons for him going to war were really for reasons of vanity rather than for what was really happening. Um, and that reflects an uneducated um, mass of soldiers at that time as well. You know, they highly depended on um, one source of news. And so we can't really blame him. He's also very young. Um, interestingly, we have the capitalization of fear. I think this is Wilfred Owen trying to highlight that there really is something to fear in war. And that's something that those propaganda posters failed to um, relay to the, their um, target audience, which would be boys just like this veteran. Um, so he does. He has no fears of fear yet. Um, Capitalising it stresses the terror of war. And I think it's Wilfred Owen stressing that there, there's real fear in war. Never mind this um, pressure on young men at that time not to show fear to be this brave soldier that kind of laughs in the face of danger. That he was trying to expose wasn't the case. War was terrifying. Um, and then look at these. this long, long list really just influences and I think further supports this idea that his reasons for going to war are empty. Um, it's all about, you know, the outfit, have, getting to salute, things like leaving, going home, getting paid, the kind of camaraderie of it all, but not really anything to do with the war per se. Ooh, oh, didn't mean to do that. Okay, and then look now what happens to this stanza. We've got a short stanza of three lines, significantly shorter than the others. So we've had this big, just go back if I can, don't want to get lost. Um, so we have this big kind of, especially this long list that kind of builds up all this excitement, all the things that he's looking forward to, all the reasons why he's joined the war. And then they send him off with these drums and cheers. So everything's very exciting. And then we just have this three line stanza. So the short stanza, I would argue, um, represents the short lived glory that he experienced. So the glory kind of ends once they send him off. And before he knows it, he's back home. So it's really this kind of represents the kind of anti climax of war. It wasn't what he expected, it was a huge disappointment. Some cheered him home, but not as crowds cheer goal. Only a solemn man who brought him fruits thanked him and then inquired about his soul. So look at the capitalization of goal, suggesting that people placed greater importance on his performance in football than they did in war. So that's just highlighting the irony um, of the situation again. Um, I think about again those drums and cheers and then the contrast of him coming back it's just the, the word solemn just creates this melancholic tone um, and again just adds to that kind of anti-climax as well it suggests a, it's probably a priest if he's inquiring about his soul as well so note as well that there's no one else there he doesn't have any family or friends that are waving him back and thanking him for his service Now he will spend a few sick years in institutes and do what things the rules consider wise and take whatever pity they may dole. Tonight he noticed how the women's eyes passed from him to the strong men that were whole. How cold and late it is. Why don't they come and put him into bed? Why don't they come? So here we just see this, this whole stanza is really about his great dependence. He's completely lost any agency in his life. 
Um, the uh, Even the ambiguity of a few sick years. He doesn't even know how long it's going to take. There's an uncertainty of his future. He's completely kind of at the whim of, of others. He's at the mercy of the government, highlighted in green as well. He's dependent on their rules. He's dependent on... When, it's, when here it says, whatever pity they may dole, dole being the money you get through welfare um, from the government. So it's entirely up to them to decide what quality of life he has and how much money he should have. But he's now dependent on their pity, whereas before he really wanted that glory. And all he's left with is pity, if that. Interestingly, Think about the women and how they used to flirt with him. We had artists that were silly for his face and wanted to paint him. And now they pass, their eyes pass him. So the contrast here to how he used to be um, looked at by women. And the verb choice obviously highlights kind of the dismissiveness of, his, of the treatment of him now. Um, and when they look at men who are whole, literally they are whole because they have their limbs but I think this is metaphorical as well he is a lesser person now he's a shell of himself um, because of his experiences of war um, and when he notices it's cold this connotes death weakness loneliness remember the warmth of the girl's hands that he used to enjoy he doesn't have that companionship anymore look at the punctuation as well indicating increasing despair towards the end of the poem and he's asking continually, why don't they come? Why don't they come? And here he's asking to be put into bed. Now he could literally be asking just to be put to bed so he can go to sleep. Um, you could argue that this is a euphemism for death. He just wants to die. Um, whatever it is, he's again yearning for a state of oblivion, which you would get through sleep or death, further emphasising just how depressed and hopeless this poor veteran is. So I feel like I've talked quite a bit about structure um, throughout as well, but some things that were difficult to mention um, without looking at the poem as a whole. So just note that throughout the whole thing, we have the juxtaposition of remembrance and realisation uh, throughout the poem that highlights the repercussions of war. So when we have remembrance, we typically have positive memories, romantic imagery, um, a life that was um, exciting, a life where he enjoyed the glory of being the man of the match and so on, in contrast um, to the stark reality after war where he is overlooked by women, he's incredibly lonely and incredibly dependent on others. Um, notice also there's, there, there is rhyming um, every other line, so it's fairly regular, um, but also the rhyming overlaps into stanzas at, at, at times. So just to give you, I just highlighted a few to show you. So we've got dry thigh and then shoulder high, recruits, fruits. Um, so you might argue that Wilfred Owen um, almost puts a thread through the poem to show how everything kind of links and has, I think, this is my um, interpretation, has a consequence. Um, so to give you... An example of that, I would probably focus on this one. So this is the long list of all the things that he's looking forward to. And it ends with hints for young recruits. And the repercussion of that is he comes home and all he does get are fruits um, from this man. So I think it's quite an interesting link here um, to indicate, well, this was the start reality. These are all the things he really wanted and that's what he gets in return. Um, also... Um, notice one of the words here doesn't rhyme with any of the other words and that's the how warm the subtle hands are of the girl um, or the girls I should say um, so that's quite interesting that that doesn't have a word it rhymes with further emphasizing you might argue um, that he will never feel that again hence why that rhyme does not come up again um, and that's everything <laughs>